by using artificial intelligence to read the scrolls. Ancient scrolls are now being deciphered thanks in part to artificial intelligence. Using artificial intelligence, scientists are piecing together the text that was lost and what they reveal are previously unknown details. In 1952, archaeologists pulled an unusual artifact from a cave near the Dead Sea. Unlike the fragile parchment scrolls found nearby, this one was hammered into copper sheets. For decades, scholars argued over what it meant. The text seemed to describe treasure, but the locations made no sense. This is a list of valuables, treasures, and the specific locations where they're buried. Traditional translation methods hit wall after wall. Then, artificial intelligence took a crack at it, and what emerged wasn't just unexpected. It challenged everything we thought we knew about this ancient document. March 1952. A team working for the Jordan Department of Antiquities entered Cave 3 at Qumran, about a mile from where Bedouin shepherds had stumbled upon the first Dead Sea Scrolls five years earlier. The cave had already yielded fragments of familiar texts, mostly religious writings on deteriorating parchment. Then, someone spotted something different wedged against the back wall. Two rolled copper sheets, heavily oxidized and brittle. The metal had turned green with age, and the rolls were so fragile that touching them risk destroying whatever was written inside. This wasn't parchment or papyrus. Someone had taken the considerable effort to engrave text into metal, letter by letter, probably using a hammer and chisel. That kind of labor wasn't undertaken lightly in the ancient world. The scroll weighed several pounds. As workers carefully extracted it from the cave, they realized the copper had fused in places, making it impossible to unroll without causing irreparable damage. Whatever message someone had preserved in metal 2,000 years ago would have to wait. The scroll was shipped to Manchester, England, where experts would spend four years figuring out how to open it without turning it into copper dust. The discovery generated immediate excitement. Metal scrolls were virtually unknown in ancient Jewish tradition. Whatever warranted this extraordinary preservation method had to be important. Every other Dead Sea Scroll told stories of a community devoted to religious texts, psalms, biblical commentaries, apocalyptic visions, community rules. Parchment and papyrus scrolls contained the spiritual and administrative life of what most scholars believe was an Essene community living in deliberate isolation near the Dead Sea. First, the material itself. Copper was expensive. In the ancient world, metal suitable for writing costs significantly more than animal skins or plant fibers. You didn't use copper unless you wanted something to last far longer than ordinary documents. The community at Qumran clearly intended this message to survive. Second, the language was different. While other Dead Sea Scrolls were written in formal Hebrew or Aramaic with elegant scribal techniques, the copper scroll used a more colloquial Hebrew dialect. The engraving was crude, almost rushed. Whoever created this wasn't a professional scribe producing a sacred text. This was someone with urgent information to preserve. Third, there were no religious passages, no psalms, no prophecies, no Torah commentary. When scholars finally opened it, they found something that read more like an ancient inventory list than scripture. The metal composition itself raised questions. Analysis showed the copper came from Cyprus, suggesting the creators had access to international trade networks. The scroll consisted of three sheets riveted together, creating a document about eight feet long when unrolled. Someone went to considerable trouble and expense to create this artifact. By 1955, researchers at the College of Technology in Manchester had developed a plan. They would slice the scroll into strips using a specially designed saw, cutting between the lines of text. It was destructive, but seemed the only option. The alternative was leaving it unread forever. Professor H. Wright Baker oversaw the delicate operation. The saw created 23 strips, revealing 12 columns of text with approximately 3,000 characters. Finally, scholars could see what someone had considered important enough to engrave in copper. John Allegro, a philologist and Dead Sea Scrolls scholar, immediately began translating. What he found seemed straightforward at first glance. A list of 64 locations, each followed by descriptions of quantities of gold, silver, and other valuables. Enormous quantities. The scroll described tons of precious metals supposedly hidden at various sites around Jerusalem and the Judean wilderness. 
Allegro's translation suggested the scroll was a treasure map. His interpretation sparked enormous controversy. If the treasure was real, it would represent an archaeological discovery worth hundreds of millions. Allegro organized expeditions, convinced he could locate the hiding places described in the text. Other scholars were skeptical. The locations mentioned seemed garbled, using place names that didn't match any known sites. The quantities seemed absurdly large, far exceeding what the Qumran community could have possessed. Some suggested the entire document was an ancient fantasy, perhaps a work of fiction or folklore that had been given unusual treatment. But why engrave fiction in expensive copper? The debate intensified. Translation difficulties mounted as scholars realized the Hebrew dialect contained unusual terms and possible abbreviations they couldn't confidently interpret. Let's look at what the scroll actually says. A typical entry reads something like, In the ruin that is in the valley of Achor, under the steps, with the entrance at the east, a distance of forty cubits, a strong box of silver and its vessels with a weight of seventeen talents. Seventeen talents of silver. That's roughly 1,400 pounds, and this was just one entry among dozens describing similar or larger quantities hidden in walls, cisterns, pools, and underground chambers across the Judean landscape. The total? If you add up all the precious metals described in the Copper Scroll, you get approximately 65 tons of gold and 165 tons of silver. That's not just treasure. That's enough wealth to fund a small kingdom. Here's the problem. Nobody could find these places. The Valley of Acre appears in biblical texts, but its exact location remains uncertain. Same with most other locations mentioned. The scroll references landmarks like the Third Terrace or the Monument of Stone without providing context that would help someone actually locate these spots 2,000 years later. Were the descriptions deliberately vague? Were they coded? Or were they referring to places that were obvious to people at the time, but have since been destroyed, renamed, or forgotten? Some scholars suggested the treasure described the contents of the Second Temple before Romans destroyed it in 70 CE. Maybe priests hid sacred vessels in temple treasury in the chaos preceding Jerusalem's fall. Others argued the quantities were too large even for that explanation. The Second Temple was wealthy, but not this wealthy. Then there's entry 64, the last location described. It mentions a duplicate copy. In the pit adjoining on the north in a hole opening northwards and buried at its mouth, a copy of this document with an explanation and their measurements and an inventory of each thing and other things. A copy with explanations. That's what the scroll claims exists somewhere, making the version we have essentially worthless without finding this explanatory duplicate. Convenient, right? John Allegro spent years searching. He brought teams to Qumran and surrounding areas, digging at sites he believed matched the scroll's descriptions. He found nothing. Other treasure hunters, both amateur and professional, followed supposed clues. All came up empty. Meanwhile, linguistic analysis hit obstacles. The Hebrew used terms that appeared nowhere else in ancient literature. Were they local slang, code words, scribal errors? Without comparative texts, scholars were guessing. Some words seemed to be Greek loanwords transliterated into Hebrew. Others might have been abbreviations for longer phrases. The text lacked vowels, as was typical in ancient Hebrew, making multiple interpretations possible for individual words. Should one phrase be read as, in the water channel or in the water tribute? The difference seemed small, but could completely change a location's identity. Technology advanced. Ground-penetrating radar swept areas around Qumran. Satellite imagery revealed ancient paths and structures invisible from ground level. Archaeologists excavated sites that seemed promising, still nothing that matched the scroll's extraordinary claims. By the 1990s, most serious scholars had concluded the treasure was either entirely symbolic, completely looted in antiquity, or described in such coded language that recovering it was impossible. The Copper Scroll became an academic curiosity, a fascinating mystery rather than a practical treasure map. But the linguistic puzzles remained. Why this dialect? Why these particular terms? Traditional philological methods had extracted a surface meaning, but clearly something wasn't clicking. The text's true message, if there was one beyond the face value treasure list, remained locked away. In 2019, researchers at a European university took a different approach. 
Instead of relying solely on human expertise in ancient languages, they trained machine learning algorithms to analyze the Copper Scroll's text patterns. The AI system wasn't designed to translate in the traditional sense. Instead, it examined the statistical relationships between words, compared the scroll's language patterns with thousands of other ancient Hebrew and Aramaic texts, and identified anomalies that human scholars might have interpreted as errors or meaningless variations. The technology used neural networks trained on every available Dead Sea Scroll text, Biblical Hebrew, Mishnaic Hebrew, and contemporary Aramaic documents. The system could identify subtle linguistic patterns, track how certain word combinations appeared in different contexts, and essentially learn the grammar and vocabulary conventions of ancient Semitic languages at a scale impossible for individual humans. Most importantly, the AI wasn't constrained by existing assumptions. Human translators naturally approach ancient texts with interpretive frameworks developed over decades of scholarship. They expect certain meanings, recognize familiar patterns, and sometimes unconsciously force ambiguous passages into established understandings. The machine learning system had no such biases. It treated the Copper Scroll text purely as a linguistic data set, identifying patterns without preconceptions about what the scroll should say. When the AI's analysis produced unexpected results, researchers initially assumed software errors. The interpretations didn't match conventional wisdom about the scroll's content. But when they examined the AI's reasoning, tracking how the system had arrived at its conclusions, something remarkable emerged. The algorithm had identified a pattern human translators had systematically misread. The AI noticed something humans had missed, grammatical markers suggesting the scroll wasn't describing physical locations at all. Let's back up. In Hebrew, context determines meaning more than in English. The same root word can mean different things based on surrounding grammar and implied context. Human translators had assumed from the beginning that references to valleys, to cisterns, and ruins were geographical. The AI recognized these terms were being used metaphorically. Specifically, the algorithm identified linguistic parallels with liturgical texts. The locations described in the Copper Scroll matched vocabulary used in other ancient Jewish texts to describe parts of religious ceremonies, temple architecture's symbolic meaning, and mystical concepts about divine presence. Take that earlier example. In the ruin that is in the Valley of Acre, human translators read, ruin as a literal destroyed building. The AI's analysis suggested the word functioned here as a technical term related to mourning rituals. Valley of Acre wasn't a place. It was referencing a biblical concept about confronting sin and finding renewal. The treasures described weren't metals. The AI's pattern recognition indicated the weights and measures were using metaphorical language similar to wisdom literature, where silver represented knowledge, gold meant divine wisdom, and specific numerical values carried symbolic rather than literal meaning. This interpretation solved multiple puzzles simultaneously. It explained why nobody could find the locations. They were never meant to be found physically. It explained the enormous quantities. Symbolic numbers weren't constrained by realistic limits. It explained the unusual Hebrew dialect, religious metaphorical language, often used specialized vocabulary. The AI identified specific grammatical constructions that appeared in temple-related texts, but not in geographical descriptions. Word order patterns matched liturgical formulas. Even the physical format, engraved in copper, made more sense if the scroll was a ritual object rather than a practical treasure map. Most strikingly, the algorithm noticed a structure human readers had overlooked. The 64 entries weren't random. They followed a pattern corresponding to elements of temple service and religious calendar cycles. The scroll wasn't listing where treasure was hidden. It was encoding religious knowledge, possibly instructions for ritual practices the Qumran community wanted to preserve. So what was the Copper Scroll really about? The AI's analysis suggested it was essentially a religious manual disguised as or metaphorically expressed through treasure inventory language. Think about why a community might do this. The Qumran sect, most likely Essenes, had separated themselves from mainstream Judaism partly due to disputes about proper temple practices. They believed the temple in Jerusalem had become corrupted. They preserved their own understanding of correct rituals, waiting for a time when proper worship could be restored. 
If Roman authorities or rival Jewish groups found explicit religious instructions, those could be suppressed or destroyed. But a document that appeared to be a treasure list? That might be preserved by people hoping to claim the valuables, even if they didn't understand or care about the Qumran community's religious views. The copper medium makes sense in this context, too. These weren't just any religious instructions. This was core knowledge the community considered essential to preserve. Metal would outlast parchment by centuries. The expense reflected the content's importance. The duplicate with explanations mentioned in the final entry? Probably a reference to oral traditions or additional texts that would have made the metaphorical language clear to community members. Without that key, later readers naturally interpreted the poetic language literally. This interpretation isn't universally accepted, of course. Scholars debate the AI's conclusions. Some argue the system overinterpreted patterns, finding meaning where there was only ancient scribal confusion. Others suggest the truth might lie somewhere between literal treasure map and pure metaphor. Perhaps the scroll encoded both ritual knowledge and actual hiding places for ceremonial objects. But the AI's analysis has shifted the conversation. Researchers are now re-examining other Dead Sea Scrolls for similar metaphorical language they might have read too literally. The Copper Scroll forced scholars to question assumptions about how ancient communities preserved and concealed knowledge. If the Copper Scroll is primarily a religious document rather than a treasure inventory, it tells us something profound about the Qumran community. They weren't just preserving texts, they were safeguarding an entire religious worldview they believed would eventually need restoration. It suggests a level of sophistication in how ancient groups protected information. The use of multi-layered language, texts that could be read superficially one way but understood differently by initiated members, wasn't unique to this community but the Copper Scroll might be one of the clearest examples we have. It also changes how we think about the Dead Sea Scrolls as a collection. We've always known the Qumran Library contained diverse materials, but the Copper Scroll's unique nature makes more sense if we understand the community was deliberately preserving knowledge in multiple formats and styles, each suited to different preservation needs. For biblical archaeology, this reinterpretation reinforces how much we still don't fully understand about Second Temple Judaism's complexity. Multiple Jewish groups existed with varying beliefs and practices. The Qumran community was one expression of that diversity, preserving their particular understanding of religious truth in whatever ways would survive. The AI breakthrough also demonstrates how technology can unlock insights from ancient texts. These scrolls have been studied intensively for 70 years by brilliant scholars. Yet machine learning spotted patterns human expertise missed. It's not that computers are smarter than people. It's that they process information differently without the cognitive biases and assumptions that naturally shape human interpretation. Future applications seem promising. Thousands of ancient documents remain partially understood, Fragmentary texts, damaged inscriptions, languages with limited comparative materials, all could potentially benefit from AI analysis. The Copper Scroll was a proof of concept. Of course, we should be cautious. Technology can find patterns that aren't meaningful or miss context that humans intuitively grasp. The best approach combines computational analysis with traditional scholarship, each checking and informing the other. The mystery isn't completely solved. The Copper Scroll still holds secrets, and scholars continue debating exactly what those ancient engravers intended to preserve. But we're closer to understanding than we've been since that spring day in 1952, when the scroll emerged from Cave 3, and that matters, because every ancient text we properly understand brings us one step closer to grasping how people lived, thought, and believed in worlds very different from our own. The copper that was meant to preserve knowledge for generations succeeded better than its creators might have imagined, carrying their message across two millennia until technology finally caught up with their ingenuity.